are there folks and welcome back into the dungeon it's been a while since i've put out a video and hopefully this one is going to be useful and fun i'm looking here at a becca a com 2000 a vhf radio transceiver for use in commercial aviation these radios are no longer useful in aircraft because of a change in the frequency spacing so this radio can only do 25 kilohertz steps of frequency spacing running from 118 megahertz up until 135.975 so these radios are no longer legal in aircraft so people are offloading them for cheap but there's a problem with this these radios are not supposed to be used on the air anymore and to do so is a violation i have this radio for monitoring in my workshop i am a licensed and qualified aircraft radio technician and i have a class one pilot's radio license as well and actually today is not really about the radio i'm just saying that there's a lot of these coming onto the market for cheap, which is a very tempting idea. But you cannot use these for transmission. Why am I showing you this then? What I'm going to show you actually is some quick and dirty antenna design. So this, at, in, in this frequency range, the antenna design becomes quite easy and simple. And it's a nice project if you are working, for example, in the two meter range on amateur radio or if you want to just build yourself a really nice fm radio listening antenna as a small project then this is for you so with that let's get started right so the first thing that we're going to want to do is come up with a nice simple antenna that we can erect and then that will be effective as a listening antenna now, they always say that uh, any antenna that's good for transmission is equally good for reception. So, what I would like to do is show you the, uh, uh, the theory behind an antenna, which actually is the wrong name for it, but we're going to use it anyway. An antenna called a quarter wave dipole. And a dipole antenna, as you would possibly know, is an antenna that consists of two segments an upper segment and a lower segment of equal length and the idea is that each wavelength would or each antenna length would accommodate one quarter of a wave and normally the voltage wave would look something like that so these two quarter waves From there to there and again from here to here would end up making half wave which is where most antenna theory likes to live and what we want to do then is make two or create two elements put them on an insulator of some kind And then feed them with a coax cable. One element would be fed from the screen. The other element would be fed from the core. And that would give us a pretty nice, very simple quarter wave antenna. But first we need to work out exactly what wavelength we're talking about. So, of course, we know the now that the frequency range that I'm looking for this radio is going to run from 118 megahertz all the way to 136 so you can see that 18 megahertz up so i want to be somewhere in the middle and the closer i can get to exactly the middle is the better so if i go 9 megahertz up so i'm going to find myself here at uh what will that be 127 megahertz now I am interested in making segments one quarter of a wavelength long. And there's a formula for that, which would be a, a one quarter wavelength will come to 75 
divided by the frequency 127 in megahertz multiplied by 0 0.95 which is the velocity factor remember that the speed of light is slower in metal than it is in free space and in aluminium it comes out at pretty much 95 percent so we're going to add in that velocity factor so let's do the calculation over here 75 divided by 127 equals that's 59 it's 0.59 meters but we remember we need to get that velocity factor in so multiply by 0 0.95 and that equals to 0 0.561 meters. 0 0.561 meters, which is 56 centimeters. 56 centimeters. So that means that each element is going to be 56 centimeters long. So times 2. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to make up an insulator where my two 56 centimeter rods are going to be fixed. And I need to make up an insulator of some construction where it can accommodate a, 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 a connector, preferably like an SO239 or maybe a BNC a female connector where my BNC can connect in because most of my coax cables here are BNC. So I want to have a BNC installed somewhere flush mounted BNC and then the the wiring or the tag the, 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 the center conductor will go to my upper radiator which is going to come out here there maybe like that and I want to have the ends of these two elements fairly close together so that now the ground lug of the other one will connect to the other the lower antenna element and maybe a couple of bolts holding the two elements in position and I would need to find a way to secure this and get it up under the out of the way but also not sticking out on top of the house uh, the more I can hide away my antennas the better uh, first of all it, it doesn't disturb the neighbors there's no ugly eyesores sticking up I already have one uh, uh, 5 8 CB antenna sticking out the top of the roof, which is looking a bit worse for wear lately. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I've been looking around my parts bins and I cannot find a BNC, so I'm going to go with an SO239, which is a bit bigger than I would have liked it to be, but not a deal breaker. You know, we're doing this on a budget and trying to keep it as simple as possible. So, yeah, if I had a bit more patience, I could go online, order a couple of BNCs, and have them here within a couple of days which is always a, a possibility for later on so I'm gonna have to modify this part of the design but let me just take you through it I have my two elements going up and down I have my insulating block and I'm starting to work out now what are gonna be the basic dimensions of the block and uh, first of all the length is gonna be pretty important so uh, the length is going to be, well, I've worked out that I want 20 millimeters from the ends down to the first bolt that holds the, uh, the upper portion of the element in. So that's 20 millimeters and then another 20 millimeter spacing between those two bolts plus 25 in between. So I'm going to have about a 5 millimeter gap if I allow for 10 millimeters drill point inward from the tube. So I'm going to have about 5 millimeters gap here, which is fine. Uh, so that's 25 mil and then another 20 and 20 so that's 40 that's 80 that's 105 millimeters from top to bottom so I can write that in now 105 millimeters huh which is 10.5 centimeters 105 millimeters Okay, uh, the width is probably going to need to be around about half of that. That's about an inch across, so uh, 25. So if I double it out, 50 millimeters, 50 millimeters uh, by about 50 millimeters should work for me. And I'm going to try and use the bolts that hold the plate on to connect to the lower element. So there's only a single wire that's going to run from the RF connector to the upper radiating element. 
Well, that should work pretty good. The only, the only uh, additional consideration now is how I want to suspend this thing. And uh, like I said, I want to uh, uh, install this in the roof area up against one of the rafters. So it would seem to me that I would be able to simply put a couple of bolts through the four corners bolted up against one of the supporting beams and I can see some problems so if I had to do that I would need to create some kind of a spacer that that would take it out over here so that the, these holes that pass through here would offset the irradiating elements from the rafter to which it was bolted I'll be back so here we go got a bracket uh, fashioned it out of some angle steel Drilled it out, made the, the holes. I could only make three holes. That's okay though. Uh, this because it was it, it had some other holes in it that I couldn't. So that's done. Three rivets holding it in place. And this is how it's going to look. Got a coaxial cable here, and that's just going to come in like that. Fasten up. And I have plenty of room at the back here to get the bolts in onto my insulator. So there's my template for my, or at least my source material for my uh, insulator, which is cheap and easy to find anywhere you go in these cheap stores. You can find these bamboo cutting blocks and they're cheap as chips. So really a nice source material, easy to work with, easy to write on, all of that stuff. So now let's measure it out and get the lines on. And I'm back. So, holes drilled, cut to length, cleaned up at the ends. Let's see if the plan worked. Well, there we have it. First part is pretty looking pretty good. Uh, lined up and everything's fine. I can get my coax on there. Quick check. Yep, it's going to feed just perfectly. And it passes through and contacts with the lower radiator or the lower element, whatever you want to call it. And now we want to get to the upper antenna. So there it is, it's all tightened up. Now, of course, I can't get the full length of the antenna into the shot, but I've measured it out. Each element is uh, Six, 56 centimeters and I got my five millimeter gap uh, in between the two so I cut down really on any uh, uh, yeah, errors in the total length and now I got my feed all I got to do is solder wire and put on a lug and bolt it on there is that so it? that's uh, uh, next. it doesn't burn when you solder it doesn't melt it's really great Yes, I said solder. Solder, solder. It's got an owl in it. I heard someone say that once. It's got an owl in it. Maybe it was, I don't know, Mr. Carlson. Uh, all right. So, yeah, I, I guess I could have made that substantially shorter. But, as I said, this is going to be a listening antenna. So, I'm not going to get excited about it. And, naturally, if this was going to be installed outdoors, then you'd want to kind of cover this with something. Uh, create little plastic uh, shroud that you can cover it with but this is going to be an indoor antenna and I do believe me antenna is working fine the only thing I want to do is just take my multimeter set it to ohms and then measure between the two elements and nothing inner to the upper continuity outer to the lower continuity this antenna is ready for installation. The only thing I have to finish making would be the offset posts, the stanchions. Right. 
I had to go back and manufacture some standoffs out of fiberglass because the the aluminium as you probably guessed inside diameter was a bit small for this but there we go for standoffs stanchions offset posts whatever you want to call them as the english like to say don't be so standoffish edward all right folks here it is all installed so there's the standoffs no contact anywhere nice and sturdy and I think that this is a workable solution for an indoor VHF band antenna. So here's the uh, VHF antenna installed in the roof. It's a little bit off center, working at a bit of a height with not much uh, support equipment, standing on an old radio chassis, uh, old box. And uh, but it's it's going to work. It'll be fine. Antenna is running down through the down the channel and into the shack. And uh, you know, ready to give this a listen. So we'll see how that goes. There she is, looking good. I think it's going to be fine. All right, folks, I've got the squelch overridden. Normally it'd be like that. Antenna's connected. Let's go up in frequency. One thirty-four point. What was it? Seven five. And there we have the air traffic services. Now I'm line of sight and I'm behind a huge hill about 20, 15 miles from Luxembourg. So I should be receiving it really strong, but because it's VHF is line of sight and I'm behind a very big hill, it's a bit soft. 